York, and as always, time for all of the sports news, and with it, Stan Lomax. Hey, good evening, everyone. Well, there could be no debate as to the local headlines with the $100 million refurbished Yankee Stadium opening up. That was the star attraction today. An announced crowd of 53,862 paid in to have a look at the new park, and that is a little bit better than the announced capacity. Also, they wanted to greet the new Yankees as the Ray returned after a two-summer stay out in Queens County. The weather couldn't have been nicer for a game of baseball, but the ball game could have been nicer. The Yankees, after a dismal start, took command in the fourth inning, and they wound up with an easy decision 11 to 4. It's a certainty that there'll be better played ball games in that sparkling new uh, stadium before uh, many days have passed. Today was a good game, but it wasn't exactly a thriller. Meanwhile, out in Chicago, Dave Kingman took over the spotlight. He belted two home runs for the Mets, and he led the club to, from a come-behind victory over the Cubs. There's Stanley Cup hockey to be played tonight. It'll be the third game of the quarterfinal round between the New York Islanders and Buffalo Sabres. That'll be in the Nassau Coliseum. We'll get around to that in a moment, but first, how about a tasty cake? people all over the metropolitan area are discovering that Tasty Cake is one packaged cake that really lives up to its good name. It's the way Tasty Cake is baked that makes it so special. With all the great tasting things like milk and butter and eggs, take Tasty Cake's crimpies for instance. Chocolate or vanilla cakes filled with rich vanilla cream and topped off with chocolatey icing. Tasty Cake crimpies come in family packs and they come for lots less than you'd expect for something that tastes so good. Tasty Cake crimpies, more and more of the good things wrapped up in one. As you mentioned, the crowd announced was 53,862, and the Yankees romped off with a decision 11 to 4, getting six runs in the eighth inning to break what had been a fairly tight ball game. 11 runs on 14 hits and two errors. Of those 14 hits, 11 were singles, two were doubles, and one was a triple. The Minnesota Twins, who jumped out to a 4 to nothing lead when they had three runs in the first inning and one in the fourth, wound up with four runs on eight hits and an error. Dave May started for the Yankees, and it wasn't his day. Dick uh, Tidrow came on to relief in the third inning and pitched good ball and received credit for his first victory of the year. Sparky Lyle nailed it down, coming on in the eighth inning. Four pitches for the losing Twins. Dave Goltz was a starter. He wasn't the loser, though. Vic Albury, a left-hander, who relieved in the fourth was. He was charged with his first loss. He's yet to win. And there was Steve Luber coming on in the sixth inning. and in the eighth, it was Tom Bergmeier. Of all the hits today, and there were 22 of them, one home run, and it was Dan Ford of the Twins in the first inning with one aboard. That was the big wallop of the day. On Chicago, it was another day for Dave Kingman. He hit two home runs and brought the Mets from behind to defeat the Chicago Cubs 10-8. to His second home run, which came in the ninth inning with two aboard, uh, brought the team from behind. They were trailing 8-7. to The total on it, 10 runs, 13 hits, 2 errors. And for the Cubs, 8 runs, 9 hits, and no errors. John Matlack started for the Mets, was rocked in the fourth inning when the Cubs scored four times. Relieved then by Tom Hall. Skip Lockwood relieved in the seventh and skipped the winner. That evens his record at 1-1. One and one. Five pitchers for the Cubs, starting with Bill Bonham. Then it was Jeff Zahn in the sixth inning. Two pitchers, Paul Reuschel and Darrell Knowles. And in the eighth, it was Tom Detour, and Tom was a loser. The record is 1-1. One and one. For those home runs, Kingman hit one in the second inning with one on. That was his third of the year. And in the ninth inning, he broke up the ball game with number four with two men aboard. There was a home run for the home team, uh, Dave Rosselli of the Cubs, hitting it in the second inning, and that came with one aboard. Before we get along to the other baseball, let's get along to Sandler and Worth. I'm Peggy Fitzgerald, speaking for Sandler and Worth, and I'm sure you've heard me talking about their wonderful Travera carpets. Talking about it, I've been raving about it. Well, naturally, it's best to visit a Sandler and Worth store to see the beautiful selection, and the stores are so nice. But I realize that maybe some of you just haven't been able to get there. Now, if it's any easier for you, why don't you call area code 201-376-5500. That's 376-5500. 
And if it's at all possible, a salesman will gladly bring samples to your home. You could suggest one or two colors that you specially like, and of course ask to see a Travera carpet, and I'm sure he could bring some lovely choices. And I think it's a nice service. Everyone at San Lindworth is so helpful. The number again is area code 201-376-5500 for their home shopping service. That's 201-376-5500. And remember, they're in Springfield, Paramus, Succasana, Nanuet, and six other locations. In Montreal, the Expos came up with six runs in the fourth inning. That was all they needed to knock off the Philadelphia Phils by an 8-6 to six score. The Expos had nine hits and an error. The losers had 13 hits and committed one error. Woody Fryman, one-time member of the Phils, was a starting and winning pitcher for the Expos. He, his first victory, he'd lost one prior to today. Dale Murray relieved in the sixth inning. Jim Cott opened up and lost for Philadelphia. That's his first defeat in the National League. Ron Reed in the fourth inning and Gene Garber in the sixth. It was Tag McGraw in the eighth inning. Greg Lazinski, a homer for the Phils, came in the fifth with one on. That was his first. And Mike Jorgensen of the Expos in the fourth inning. That was the big fourth. Belt at his first of the year, and there was one on. Other National League game, the Pittsburgh Pirates continue to roll. They started out with five runs in the first inning and got four more in the seventh to knock off the St. Louis Cardinals nine to three. They did it with ten hits, committed an error, while the Cards had six hits and one error. Jim Rooker was the winner for Pittsburgh. His first victory, he's lost none. Raymond Hernandez came on in the seventh inning. Lynn McLaughlin was the loser for the Cards. His first defeat, he'd won one. Uh, Mike Wallace in the sixth, and in the seventh it was Alfred Bar some home runs, Reggie Smith of the Cardinals in the sixth, Al uh, Oliver of the Pirates in the seventh with two on, and Willie Stargell of the Pirates in the seventh. The Pirates are now 4-0, and and they lead the Eastern Division. There's still one game to go in the National this evening. It has the Cincinnati Reds are undefeated in the western half. They've won four in succession. They'll be in Atlanta. They'll be going against the Braves, a club that's two games in back of them. Now let's hear about Hillman Cohan. Hillman Cohan Vision Center, known throughout the New York metropolitan area for reliable eyeglass service, is in Connecticut for the first time. Grand opening now in Landmark Square, Stamford. At Hillman Cohan Vision Center, they can fill your doctor's prescription or accurately copy it from your present lenses. And in many cases, they can have your new glasses ready for you in one hour. And there are lots of fashionable frames and lenses to choose from. But best of all, Hillman Cohan Vision Center gives you the great eyeglass guarantee. For one year from the day of purchase, if your glasses break, Vision Center will fix or repair broken flames and lenses. Or it'll fit you with a brand new pair. Now that's Hillman Cohan Vision Center, grand opening in Stamford, one hour eyeglass service and the great eyeglass guarantee. Put on a happy face at your Vision Center. Come into Connecticut's first Hillman Cohan Vision Center in Landmark Square in Stanford. Grand opening right now. Open daily from 10 to 6, Monday and Thursday until 9, and Saturdays 10 to 5. Champion Boston Red Sox are having their trouble getting started this year. They were beaten by the Chicago White Sox today by an 8-4 score up in Fenway Park. The winning Chicago team, 13 hits and an error, and Boston had 9 hits and 2 errors. Bart Johnson, starter and winner for Chicago, his first victory, he's lost none. Clay Carroll relieving in the sixth. Rick Wise suffered the defeat, that's his first. And Dick Pohl came on in the fourth inning. Brian Downing for the Sox, oh, White Sox, a home run in the second, none on. Bernie Carbo of Boston in the fifth with two on. And Buddy Bradford of White Sox in the ninth with none aboard. Buddy also had two doubles and a single. There's another American League contest this evening. It pairs the last place California Angels with the next to last Kansas City Royals in Kansas City. The Collegians were busy in Seton Hall today. Knocked off St. Peter's 8-5 to five with 15 hits, 3 errors. St. Peter's 8 hits and 2 errors and that was a 100th victory in the 4 years he's been the head coach for Mike Shepard of Seton Hall. New Jersey State College Conference game. Montclair shut out William Patterson 5 to nothing with 11 hits and 1 error. Uh, Patterson Patterson had two hits and one error. St. John's victorious over Bridgeport, shut out three to nothing, seven hits, two errors, and Bridgeport, six hits and five errors. Kane was a winner over Monmouth, nine to four, and Fordham won its fourth in a row when it turned back Lafayette, seven to four. They did it with six hits and one error, and Lafayette had two hits and one error. Moravian College nosed out Drew, seven to six, nine hits, three errors, and Drew University, 10 hits and two errors. New York Tech beat its neighbor, Hofstra, 13 to three, and they had 18 hits, two errors. Hofstra had three runs 
Collins on six hits and three errors. A doubleheader, Glassboro State won both ends from Rutgers, South Jersey. The first game 11 to one, the second 12 to two. And now let's fly TAP. How long have we been lying here? Oh, I don't even know what day it is. Mm, this Portuguese sun feels delicious. Mm, I feel ambitious. Think I'll tan my back. What are those books? Restaurant guides. I'm planning our next 14 meals. You're kidding. Let's see. You're not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Indulge without guilt on your next vacation. Let TAP, the airline of Portugal, take you on one of our two to three week treasure and pleasure tours to Portugal, Spain, or Morocco. Start in Portugal and take advantage of the lowest airfare to continental Europe. Waiter, I'll have the gazpacho of Alentejo, the crayfish lagosta, and a diet cola. Diet cola? I don't know, overindulge. Oh. <laughs> Come on, let yourself go on TAP. Prices begin at just $120 per person plus applicable airfare. Prices quoted are based on double occupancy and two to three week GIT rates. Here's some features from the Rutgers Relays, the first day held at the course in New Brunswick in the intermediate 400 hurdles. It was won by Randy Clark of Adelphi, 53 seconds flat, and Mark Hurst of Manhattan was second, and Ray Lynn of Philadelphia Pioneers was third. The 400 meters went to Kevin Price of Adelphi, and he was timed in 48 seconds flat. In back of him was Greg Ekman of Villanova. He was second, and there was a tie for third between Dennis Dice of the New York Pioneers and Mel Richards of Richardson of Adelphi. In the 800 meters, Joe Savage of New York AC, the winner, one minute 53 and five tenths. Running out runner up was Brian McElroy, also New York AC. Third was Bill Dabney of Adelphi. The 1500 meters was taken by Tony Colon of the New York AC, three minutes, 44 and one tenth second. George McKay of Villanova was second, and Ron Spears of the New York AC was third. Quadrangular track meet, Fairleigh Dickinson University victorious with 106 points, City College of New York second with 47, Kings Point 27, and Ryder 14. Hockey is the name of the game in town this evening. The New York Islanders coming home to the Nassau Coliseum to play the third game of the Stanley Cup quarterfinals. They'll be meeting the Buffalo Sabres. The two-game visit up to the north was a near disaster for the Long Island outfit. Not only did they lose two games to the Sabres, but they suffered a couple of injuries which possibly might affect the club's play this evening. Ed Westfall, the solid man of the team, was on crutches yesterday. Uh, he was belted with a hard shot, the puck hitting him on the ankle, causing a hairline fracture, and it's very doubtful if he'll be able to play the rest of the uh, playoffs. The fourth game of the best of seven will be Saturday. That'll be in the Coliseum. And then if they need more, it'll be back in Buffalo on the 20th, which is a Tuesday. That'll be game five. There are three other playoff contests this evening. Defending champion Philadelphia Flyers, who lead two games to none in Toronto against the next two contests with the Maple Leafs. Four, number four, will be listed for Saturday. Boston Bruins, they're even with Los Angeles Kings at one and one. They'll be playing uh, the, out in the coast tonight. They'll be there for two games with the Kings and Montreal Canadiens, and they have a two to nothing edge. They're invading Chicago for a joust with the Chicago Blackhawks this evening, and they'll play number four if necessary. They'll have to play it on Sunday, but after that, it will be back to Montreal for the fifth game. So that's the way the hockey stands, and also that's just about the way our story stands for another day. However, before we toss it back to Bob and Ray, let's have this word from Eminem Mars Candy. <laughs> Chocolate candy bar and got something new. It's called Snick Snack Sticks. Milk chocolate outside, crisp cookie inside. To make your day a little sweeter for you. So when life becomes some drummy, you can entertain your tummy with a Snick Snack. Take a break, take a Snick Snack. And when things are going terrible, relax and make it bearable with Snick Snacks. Take a break, take a Snick Snack. Here's a brand new candy stick that'll wake up your taste. It's new Snick Snack Sticks. Light, luscious layers of crisp, cookie covered with creamy milk chocolate. Snick Snack Sticks. With your coffee break, after school break, late show break, bite into a Snick Snack Sticks. Take a break, take a Snick Snack, single bar or six pack. When it's time to take a break, take a Snick Snack. Well, New Yankee Stadium has been christened. Okay, Stan, that's it. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow, and that does it for Bob and Ray today. Before we go, a reminder to...